Will Florida State capitalize on its official visitors list? Let's break them down. You are Locked On Seminoles, your daily podcast on the Florida State Seminoles. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back into Locked On Seminoles. I am your host, Brian Smith. Today, I'm going to break down each and every one of the visitors that are expected in Tallahassee. So let's get started. First off, the main thing to talk about is the quarterback position with any group. Tramel Jones is supposed to be in town for his official visit. This is a key one because he was recently in Gainesville yet again for to watch a workout with the Gators. If you're going to go through a recruiting class without a quarterback, that's not a good way to do business. Will Florida State be okay if they don't get one? Possibly. But you've had this young man committed to you for roughly a year. It'd be kind of a disappointment if you didn't end up with him at the end of the day. So that's a big official visit for the Knowles. He plays at Mandarin High School in Jacksonville. Really good kid. That's a good player. Hopefully he ends up with Florida State, but that's why you take the visits. Also coming in this weekend, somebody that he could eventually throw the football to from the state of Georgia, and that's Hollis Davidson. This is a kid that I think should be ranked higher than he is by some of the recruiting services. He plays at uh, McIntosh in Peachtree City, Georgia. Just a great all-around tight end, but I think most importantly is how agile Hollis Davidson is. Very athletic kid in space, and he does have some size. He's 230, 240 pounds. And he has the ability to run block as well. But kids his size don't normally move like that and make plays in space. Hollis Davidson was also previously committed to Auburn. He's going to visit there, like Georgia and several other schools are involved. Florida State is one that some people think have a great shot to get him. I need to see it personally for me to believe it because he went back to Auburn even after he decommitted, which is kind of a weird situation. So I'm just kind of – all hands off on where he goes until he signs. It's it's hard to follow him, but I again, I'm not disproving anything when it comes to his abilities. It's very clear. He can play, and that's why all these schools, SEC, ACC, et cetera, want to get Hollis Davidson in their grasp, in their grasp. But again, Florida State, not the deepest team, as I've talked about many times on this show, at tight end, this is a chance to get back in the mix. They got one really great tight end last year that I think is going to play early. But now if you get two years in a row getting somebody like that, it would change your program's depth at the tight end position. It adds more playmakers, too. Also, speaking of playmakers, a kid that I think is going to commit to Florida State very soon, Gregory Zay Thomas. Uh, He could play corner or safety at the next level. But after seeing him at OT7 here recently, I am in complete agreement with those that have him ranked at corner now. 6'2 and 190 pounds, but he just runs like a guy that fits the position. Not everybody has corners that size. Think of some of the players that Florida State has at the DB board right now on their depth chart, whether safety, nickel, or corner. A lot of length. This kid fits that to a T, but he looks like physically standing next to Gregory that he's somebody that's already two years into the program maybe because his length and his frame is just naturally built out already. Now it's just fine-tuning. Isn't really going to need to add weight. It's just getting better condition and making sure that you're ready with all your technique and everything because Thomas has that ability to come in and play from a physical standpoint. Now can they finish? Clemson's the other team that he told me when I was at OT7 that he's looking at hard. I don't know if Clemson really has a shot or if it's really over with, and he just wanted to throw me off a bit. But it sounded like to me this one's all been over, and he, he plays at American Heritage down in South Florida. So that's a bit of a bonus because that's a program if you're Florida State. I mean, Sartan was the head coach there at one point. You have to make sure you get kids from there anyway, but your DB coach was there. So that's a great prospect for Florida State, and I, I think he'll commit at the end of the month. I want to say it's the 26th or 27th. He's got his commitment date. A player that is interesting that I don't know very much about at all, and I I may butcher the name here, Shamar Arnaud from Carrollton. He's from the same high school as Juju Lewis. It's one of the best programs in the state of Georgia. Carrollton's on I-20, just headed towards the state of Alabama, right before the border. Long corner, again, shocker, a kid that has the ability to play multiple spots, possibly long-term, but he is projected at corner, 6'2", 170 pounds, give or take. This is a kid that, again, you can never have enough length in the secondary. 
Florida State's DB room this year, in my opinion, is top five. Take a pick on what other schools you want to talk about, Michigan, Ohio State, Notre Dame, Georgia, whatever schools. Florida State's right up there with any of them. This is why. Kids like this that you bring in and develop that have the size and length you want. His film's good, but I don't know enough about him in terms of the recruitment to say where Florida State's at. I know one of the guys on 24-7 thinks that Florida State's the team to beat. We'll see, but he's a kid that I'm curious about after this weekend. Moving along here, a kid that I know very well. This one could be the telling tale. Byron Lewis, running back, another kid from American Heritage. He has bounced around in a lot of different ways. Wisconsin, Florida State, Miami are all schools involved. But he didn't know where he was going to go early on, even though everybody thought Florida State, Miami. And the reason I say I don't think he did, because he wouldn't even have taken the Wisconsin visit. I was a little off. I thought it was going to be just those two. Then Wisconsin got involved with him and got him to come up. But he's a he's a prototypical old school running back, but still has the ability to catch the football. I think Florida State has as good a shot as anybody. Miami is involved, but they have one kid committed at running back. I'm not sure that he wants to leave the state per se, but he's really not giving me or anybody else any indication that there's not another opportunity for him that's better than Florida State. So we'll see. But this weekend is big. 200-pound guy can block, run, and catch. Florida State needs to keep their running back room healthy, but uh, they've got some depth and everything. But they're going to lose a couple of key guys here over the next year or so, including Warren Stofiel, who's probably going to be their number one guy, and Rodell, young man that just transferred from Bama. Byron's big enough to come in and contribute. So that's important for Florida State fans to know as well. Speaking of contribute and due to size, how about this kid? Kevin Wynn out of Greene County, Greensboro, Georgia, 310, 320 pounds, a pure defensive tackle. This is the kind of player that Florida State needs to get. This is the young man in a size perspective that Florida State hasn't always gotten here recently. And then this last class, they finally started getting some bigger D linemen. If they can get Green to go with what they signed last year, they'd be right back on pace. And that's how you get into the college football playoff and make something happen is having defensive lines like this. You're not going to just stymie teams throwing the ball. The only thing you can really do in today's era against quarterbacks that are truly on is put pressure on them and put them in long yard situations because you can stop the run. Guys like Kevin Wynn, that's going to help you do that a lot. George is a team to watch there. That always makes me nervous. But Kevin is a kid that he's liked Florida State for a long time. They've been involved with him. Uh, Texas and some other schools are in there too, but I, I think Florida State might have the best chance here. Georgia's loaded with D linemen, not, not real shocking. Texas, I'm not sure where you should go with them on this. They lost their defensive line coach from last year. He's now at LSU. That's his old, that's his old stomping grounds. Florida State might be able to get a steal because there's so many defensive linemen in Georgia this year, even by Georgia standards that are big bodied kids. Georgia can't get them all. It's just not realistic. Kevin Wynn is one of the most important recruits on the board. Let's see how his visit goes. How about possibly landing an offensive lineman that was priorly, prior committed commitment to the University of Florida? That's Peyton Joseph, Houston County in Warner Robins, offensive lineman that could probably play center or guard, just over 300 pounds, around 6'3", 6'4". I think this is a good football player, but it's one that probably isn't getting enough respect because the group of, and I'll go over some of these kids in a minute, the group of linemen that Florida State's bringing in this weekend is ridiculous. I've heard a lot of good things in terms of where Florida State stands with Peyton Joseph, but I don't know if it's a kid that truly gets enough respect, He's a really good football player. Gavin Nix, this is a kid I know well, linebacker at IMG Academy in Bradenton. He's been there for a while. He's from Kissimmee, Florida. He probably would have went um, to one of the local schools that you're traditionally going to see probably Osceola and he would have been just fine there, but he went to, he went to IMG cause he wanted the challenge and he's down to a handful of schools, Oregon and Miami are the two teams to watch. Florida state needs a huge weekend to get him. He could play middle or he could play will, but again, Miami and Oregon take your pick on which one it is are the two leaders barring something unforeseen. Florida state needs a huge weekend to get him. Moving back to the state of Georgia, C.J. Wiley. This is a kid that I know Georgia really wants. That always makes it rough. Big-bodied kid. Florida State needs more size, so this is kind of an interesting battle, and he's been to campus before. 
but he plays at Milton. They won 7A state title last year in the state of Georgia. It's just on the north edge of Atlanta. He played with Cam Newton, seven on program. I've seen him several times. Under Armour camp, seven on seven events. Really, really good football player. But I'm curious to see if anybody can get him away from Georgia, Auburn, and several other programs all across the South are recruiting him as well. Florida State needs a big receiver in this class, a guy that can be a go-to guy, not just a boundary guy that fills out the roster, but a go-to receiver. C.J. Wiley is one of those kids that could certainly be on that level and make it happen. Before I go on, let's, let's talk a little bit about eBay Motors. We're going to get back to it here in just a second on Locked On Seminoles. But first, a word from our sponsor. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive with eBay, eBayMotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to United States customers. All right, let's continue on with the list. And if you haven't noticed already this theme, uh, this is a tremendous list, top to bottom. Florida State has got a great list. Myron Charles, next kid up. This is another massive defensive lineman. He's right around 300 pounds, 290 in that range. He's from Port Charlotte, so it's a little bit closer. Florida State has trended with him, but he did just have a recently great visit with Miami. I'm curious to see if Florida State can swing the momentum back. It's going to be Florida State, Miami, or Florida. Point blank, it's going to be one of those three, barring something completely unforeseen. Florida State needs, again, theme here. This is not going to go away until otherwise proven. They need more size up front, straight out of the high school ranks on the defensive line. And this is a kid that's a big-time talent. If Florida State gets him, that would help solve some of their problems. Dalen McCutcheon, wide receiver. This is a kid that probably isn't as well-known amongst Florida State fans, but it's a kid that I've seen on film, and he's a really talented player. Plays at Lovejoy in the greater Dallas area. He's a route runner. He's a guy that can make plays in space. He's not the biggest guy in the world. He's 5'11", 6 foot, but he's really quick and has great hands. McCutcheon's being recruited by some of the usual usual suspects in the greater Texas, Oklahoma area. So don't be surprised if he ends up at one of those. But he's got Ohio State, Florida State, Texas, schools like that after him. Really, really talented player. Florida State needs to do really well with this visit, but they're definitely in the mix and on the short list for him. Next up is a kid that I've mentioned several times, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it because he's such a priority for Florida State. Everybody should know about him, but here's the overview. Jalen Wiggins, Rickards High School in Tallahassee, defensive lineman, but he is committed to Florida. You cannot lose star players from your own city to your arch rival. If that's Needed to be explained, you shouldn't be on this podcast listening because these are the kinds of players that make or break rivalry games. Six, four and a half, 260-ish. By now, he was 250 or so, 255 the last time I talked to him. I'm sure he's went up a little bit. Very athletic, could play defensive end or defensive tackle. Wiggins is a top 100 recruit, and quite frankly, he's good enough to play for any program in the country. Again, he's from Tallahassee. Florida State has to flip that kid at some point. And speaking of a battle with Florida, Tavion Wallace out of Wayne County, linebacker, one of the best in the country. Florida State has trended with him, but he had a good visit with UF. They thought they did pretty well. And you know what? This is your chance to flip again, the momentum back towards the Knowles. Linebacker is a position they don't have the greatest amount of depth anyway. So Florida State's going to be able to sell what they have. The only thing is you just got to win the chemistry battle here. Florida did a good job by all accounts. Now you get your, your chance to kind of flip that back. Tavion Wallace is the player, and I hope for Florida State's sake that he makes a decision sooner than later. They do need linebackers that kind of need to know where they stand, but I'd imagine he'll make a decision fairly soon. So really good football player. Might even be a top 100 kind of guy in the country 
but he doesn't get enough attention. He plays at a, at a county school where not a lot of people are, but he, he can really play. Now we're going to start getting into some of the big boys. Um, I don't think it's going to be surprising to anybody here. Florida State, they're going to lose several guys over this year, next year off the offensive line. They need to kind of bulk back up. Uh, after last season, as well as they played overall, it's not surprising that they're in on a lot of guys. But the next few guys I'm going to mention are certainly not lacking for size. Lamont Rogers at a horn in Mesquite, another Dallas area kid, massive player, 6'6, 315 pounds. He can pretty much name his, you know, his ticket, whether it's guard or tackle. Cannot teach the size. <clears throat> Excuse me, but I would imagine right tackle would be the most likely just because he's so aggressive, but he might be able to play left tackle too. And if you wanted to move him inside the guard, Lamont's good enough to do that as well. Um, as far as the schools go, it's a wide list. And I don't honestly, I've never spoken to him. I don't honestly know who's the most likely, <coughs> excuse me, but Florida State's getting his last visit of this month. Missouri, A&M, Texas, Oklahoma are some of the schools, not surprising on his short list. I'm curious to see where Florida State goes with him after this because they need at least two more offensive linemen to come into this class on the edge and maybe two more on the inside to make this kind of where they need to be long term and kind of get away from taking so many transfer portal kids. Another kid that's interesting but not quite as big is Josh Petty, Fellowship Christian School just outside of Atlanta. <coughs> this is a young man that everybody – thinks about him differently. Like Georgia thinks he might play center. And that's the only spot they would probably use. They want massive offensive linemen. This kid's around 250 pounds right now. I don't think that Florida State looks at it the same as Georgia. They, they take kids that are really big and get weight off of them. Florida State is a little bit different. I think he's a guy that could play guard or tackle long-term, but he's probably going to need a red shirt year to get bigger, but he has great feet. The only question is, how much competition is he played out? How do you really grade him? I just look at it from an athletic standpoint. Petty is really, really gifted in that regard. Georgia Tech might be the biggest comp for Florida State, depending on who you ask, but he's got offers across the country. So some of the schools up north, so all the schools down south, Petty's probably got 40 offers. A kid that Florida State really needs to get if they're going to, quote, unquote, maximize this class is Solomon Thomas. He's committed. He's still looking at Miami. He's still looking at Florida. Still looking at LSU. He's a young man from Reigns High School in Jacksonville. Very, very athletic kid. Big enough right now, I think, at three ten ish, give or take, that he could come in and compete at least for a two deep spot. And he prefers to play guard. He's five star by some of the people across the nation. Uh, I don't think there's much doubt that he's a top fifty player conservatively. I knew when I saw him by accident. I was scouting somebody else his sophomore year that he was going to be a really, really good football player. But at the same time, I didn't know he would get to this level. He looked good at left tackle last year, to be honest. Florida is definitely a threat. LSU might be, and so might Miami. But the Gators are probably the biggest threat to flip him. Florida State cannot lose kids like that if they're going to get to the top of the heap in college football. Ty Haywood, another offensive lineman. This is one of the most athletic kids, and I, I watched his film again right before this show just, just to get an idea. He's at Ryan High School in Denton, just north of Dallas. Tremendous feet, really gets out and moves in space, and he's a finisher. This is a guy that tries to just absolutely mow over people, kind of like Solomon Thomas, to be honest. Florida State is battling all the normal suspects, the Texases of the world, etc. I don't know if Florida State is the team to watch here. They do get the last visit, and I think that's important. Watch out for Oklahoma. Watch out for a and these, these are not shocking answers, but the last visit, Florida State's losing a lot of guys. They have something to sell here. I don't know what his time frame is for a decision. Again, I'm hoping that a lot of these o line because Florida State needs to hit, hit on some of these kids. I'm hoping that some of these kids make a decision soon so they can get their board lined out and get it figured out one way or the other. But Ty Haywood is one of the best players in the country. He's a five-star by 24-7 sports. Another kid committed to the Knowles that they're trying to keep um, is Javion Hilson. He's the number one pass rusher on Rivals. He's number three on 24-7. He's a borderline five-star in most services. I believe Rivals has him as a five-star. Florida was 
getting back in there with him at one point. But Texas is now the school that it's down to. It's Florida State or Texas. Here's your chance to hopefully get him to end his recruitment and lock in with the Florida State Seminoles. He's coming this weekend. Great kid. Absolutely great kid. And a pure pass rusher. Florida State does not get enough of these guys. If you're going to get to the elite level, you can't lose the kids in state like this once they commit to you because he's a difference maker. There's a reason that Hilson has offers for most of the programs around the country because you don't find kids like this with his work ethic, with his natural size. He's about 235 right now. And his ability to just shoot out of his first first step, his stance coming out is just tremendous. I don't know if you're going to find many better than him. Rivals might have it right. Having Hilson number one in the country is an edge rusher. He's that good. The only other thing I want to mention about him is I think that with his maturity, he might even be able to help as a freshman. He's a kid that's very coachable. That that also adds to your value. Some kids aren't ready mentally, and that takes away from their ability, especially that first year in college, because it is a big transition. But Hilson is a truly, truly great kid. Vernell Brown the third, Jones High School in Orlando. This is a kid that a lot of people think is a is going to be a Florida State guy, myself included, from what I've heard. But Florida had a good visit. Ohio State, we'll see, but he probably wants to stay closer to home. Miami visit was really good. It's going a lot of different directions, but he's been impressed with his visits overall. Um, hopefully I'll get a chance to speak with Vernell again this next week after he gets done with his visit with the Knowles. Uh, message with him a little bit in the last few days, but nothing major. He's just kind of going through the visits to see what happens. But this is the last one, and this is hopefully enough to get him to commit. He had told me at OT7 recently that if everything goes well, he would announce this summer before the season, but he wasn't sure. He wanted to make sure the visits told him where to go. Fair enough. Here's his last one. It's the Florida State, and the Knowles have done a tremendous job of recruiting him. I don't think that anybody's going to be surprised by that. Florida State's receiver room last year would be very attractive to most people after what they did. So, Vernell is a slot guy that he could play outside as well. And also, like Hilson, elite student, great kid. He's going to be very coachable. So, that's going to be very interesting. I don't think I missed anybody else here on the list, but uh, we, we've got a, a great list of recruits coming in this weekend for Florida State. Uh, before I wrap up, one other thing, note that next week, not this end of this week, but next week, just nationally, there's going to be a ton of commitments. And we're going to talk about that next on Locked on Simmons. By the end of June, Florida State should be able to get to roughly 12, 14 commitments if everything just went perfect. That's not necessarily realistic. I think it's more likely they'll end up between the seven to nine range. They're going to pick up a few kids next week. That's that's just inevitable. With all these kids visiting, they should get Zay Thomas. They might have a couple more kids that are committed like Hilson. Jamel Jones, et cetera, reaffirmed. That's also important, but it'll be random. Maybe it's Tavion Wallace. Maybe it's a few other guys, but I like Wallace. I, I think Tremel will reaffirm it, or they'll know one way or the other. That's probably the more important way to look at it. I think Hilson will as well. The question for me is, can they get one of the Texas offensive tackles? Maybe. Could they maybe get McCutcheon, the wide receiver out of Dallas? Could they get any of those guys? Because they're a little harder because they're further away, obviously. And then, of course, you've got to be able to get some of the kids locally as well. It's a great list of prospects, Georgia kids, Florida kids. You know, if you get somebody like the tight end out of Georgia, the Davidson kid, he's, he's tremendous. There are so many ways Florida State can help itself as a program, and they're in on a bunch of Arno, the DB out of Carrollton, Georgia. I'm guessing three, four guys will commit in the next seven to ten days. Hopefully. But again, these are 17, 18 year olds. They, they kind of fly by their own schedule. They're certainly not asking me when they should announce, but a ton of guys, just nationally speaking, not just Florida State, are going to make a decision like 26th through the 29th. Some of them are Florida State as well, like Greg St. Thomas. I'm hoping that a bunch of them are done because that way we'll have some clarity. That's what we can always look for is just trying to figure out okay, we're into summer, now what's left? But if these kids drag in into July, you just have to wait. There, there's nothing else you do. So hopefully a bunch of decisions are made next week and we'll have more clarity on where Florida State is. But if this weekend goes well, 
and gives Florida State a chance to have a top five class. This is the weekend that Mike Norvell and his staff have built up to and it's now coming into fruition. So with that, please hit that like button and subscribe. Please share this podcast. And as always, have a great night. Thank you very much.